This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's the thing, guys. I know my new MacBook Pro video is a little bit late. I bought the M2 Pro expecting to make this big video about it, but to be honest, the performance differences in between the M2 Pro and M1 Pro are kind of non-existent. <laughs> With the M2 Pro, of course, you get more cores. You get a updated HDMI port, a little bit better battery life, Wi-Fi 6E, and that's about it for all of the videos video workflows that I was doing, uh, oftentimes my M1 Pro MacBook from the previous year was actually faster. 348, 349, M1 beat it by one sec, okay. In Premiere, in between an M1 Pro and an M2 Pro, are the exact same export times too. This is upscaling a 50 second 4K clip to a two times scale. Okay, the M1 Pro is completed at 23 minutes, 54 seconds, the M2 Pro is still going. M1 is going so much faster. Done, M1 Pro's done, M2 Pro. Isn't done yet. Okay, now it's done. What the heck? So instead of scrapping this entire video, I just got rid of all of the fluff I was talking about with the M2 Pro. And this is basically turned into a long-term one year review of my M1 Pro MacBook that I do love dearly. And if you're a video creator and you're buying a M2 Pro today, or you're lucky and find an M1 Pro use at a cheaper price, then you are going to be solid. So I use the M1 Max 16 inch and the M1 Pro 14 inch often. And I always went back to the 14 inch M1 Pro. You should go Pro and not Max 14 inch and not 16. I feel often I'm kind of wishy-washy and ah, you can get that or that, but I feel very passionate about this. The M1 Pro, this MacBook was so crazy because we went from Intel chips to Apple Silicon. It was a huge transition for power, just the raw power, but also power our efficiency and the gains that we saw were just insane for the people who want to upgrade their laptop and maybe they haven't seen the news in the past one or two years um, that is why these laptops have gotten so good that Apple Silicon transition but also MacBooks now have ports after five years of not having any ports so the price that we're looking at for the specific M2 Pro MacBook Pro is three thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars so it's the mid tier MacBook Pro. And that's the same exact price as my M1 Pro MacBook that I purchased over a year ago. It's so powerful for that $3,299 price tag. And I believe it's the best bang for your buck, this SKU. So I edited some of the biggest videos that I did this past year on this tiny MacBook machine. So I did the recent Apple event back in September. That edit is always so crazy because you are going for speed, nothing can crash, and you have to export as quickly as as possible to get your video up at a similar time as all the other YouTubers. And oh my gosh, this was such a champ. And whew, a little bit of a curveball hit me. I've never had this happen in my entire life, but my MacBook charger just bricked didn't work anymore. And the only charger that I had other than that was my USB-C brick for my iPad Pro, which was only like a 20 watt tiny charger, but I could still charge it with USB-C. So I just kept that plugged in as I was editing away for like the seven hours that it took me to finish the video. And what is so crazy is the power efficiency. As I was editing in DaVinci Resolve, the battery didn't even go down. I was able to sustain that 100% battery throughout editing the entire video and also exporting. The other biggest video that I edited this past year was our Lab 22 Kickstarter video, which was kind of crazy. By the way, thank you so much for your patience with that. You know, uh, building a new brand and building hardware is super difficult, but we're starting to ship at the end of February and I'm just super excited for that. You can see all of the different revisions that we've gone through. So it's like Sarah for the first four, then we have Kyle, then Sarah, then Kyle, then Sarah, then Kyle, then Sarah, 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 Sarah. Um, Kyle is my remote editor who helps me out occasionally. Um, so let's go into this beast of an edit. Okay, so as you can see, this timeline was pretty intense. Not all of my edits are like this, but if you're doing edits like this all the time, that's when I would allow you 
to get the 16 inch MacBook because that extra real estate does go a long way. Um, I actually did this with my Apple Studio display with this connected. And again, there were no issues. Um, the film convert color grade is still on. And we have the timeline settings to full playback. So that's going to make it play every single video frame, 24 frames per second. It can't skip some to keep going. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna do it. So let's, let's just test it out. Stand works. This is the iPad stand. It's great for illustrators, note takers, iPad connoisseurs, and also those obsessed with productivity. So you got like, you know, the text animation, some B-roll, some music. And as you can see up here, it's not dropping any frames. So this is where you can tell. If this is red, that's when it's dropping frames. Um, but it's green, playing back. Oh, right there, it messed up just because it was a transition, but it recovered. Two times speed. Go back. So again, this is a mix of 4K footage from the FX6, 4K footage from the A7S III, that highly compressed XAVC 4K footage. And when it comes to video editing with machines, of course, you always want a fast export time, but you get the most value out of computers that can play back your footage. So you're not stuttering in the timeline. And that's what I've been kind of amazed with. I really think the average video creator can do so much damage with this computer. Like you really, like, I usually hate to say this because I'm, I'm the type of person who just maxes out everything, right? You really don't need the maxed out MacBook Pro, the mid tier, and also the 14 inch size. I just feel like it's perfect. It's so portable. And hey, if you are a video editor and you're on a Mac and maybe you're switching to Resolve or you just have switched to Resolve, I have a tip for you. I'm seeing this on Twitter a ton because I had the same issue as well. If you're having issues with editing your footage and liking the color in Resolve, but then hitting export and it not matching up when you upload it to YouTube or maybe you watch it in QuickTime, do these two things in Resolve to solve your problem. Number one, go to project settings, color management, timeline color space, and select rec 709-A. And then go to your preferences, general, and make sure this is checked, the use Mac display color profiles for viewers. And that's going to ensure that the video that you export is actually going to look like uh, what you've edited in Resolve. This was my biggest, biggest learning curve starting to edit on Mac again after I just had my workflow, you know, on my PC, the color, the color wasn't turning out as I wanted. There's a few videos on this channel that I just gave up and they're super orange and just like over color graded. Um, yeah, sometimes you just gotta ship it. You know, you just gotta upload the video. Hey, just give me one minute here. Remember in last week's video when I was like, Judy really likes Squarespace as well. We should we should make a website for Judy. Well, I've been dabbling with my own Squarespace website. Uh, that's what I use for my online portfolio, saradici.com. And they just released a huge update called the Fluid Engine, where you can now take blocks of text, photos, and all of the other awesome types of content that you have on your website and you can put them wherever you want on your website in a very fluid way. And Squarespace does all of the magic behind the scenes to make sure that it's perfectly formatted for a desktop, for an iPad, for a phone. And so I thought it was fun. Hey, why don't we build a Squarespace website for my love, Judy, my cat, Mr. Judy. And at the same time, I can show you this magic of their new fluid engine. Honestly, about time Judy got his own website, am I right? Okay, so a lot of you probably don't want to build websites for your pets. However, if you're a working creative and you want an awesome creative portfolio or you wanna sell digital or physical goods online, you wanna start an e-commerce website, Squarespace is the way to do it. They have so many amazing integrations that make it just so easy. They have beautiful templates for a great starting point or as you can see, you can now use their fluid engine to customize them as much as you want. So if you want to try it out, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. But if you want to get started today, go to squarespace.com slash That's me for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Do it. Okay. Back to the MacBooks. Okay. Now we need to talk about the size, right? 14 inch. I really feel like it is the best size. God, these computers can get very smudgy. 
they can get very smudgy. Especially since Resolve really uses up a laptop screen really well. Uh, I have not run into any issues when I'm traveling out and about being like, ah, oh, I need more screen space. Now the bezels are pushed out further. You just get more screen real estate now with the size. And I did use the 16 inch for a while. And I'm telling you, that thing gets so heavy in a backpack. It is so bulky when you're in an airplane seat. I mean, if you're in the main cabin, forget about it. If you're in Delta Comfort, maybe, right? But when I traveled with these 16 inch MacBook Pro, I instantly was like, this is not gonna work. It did not motivate me to whip out the laptop and get some editing done. It was just too bulky. It was too much for the poor little airplane trays. And so if it is your main goal for the MacBook to be the machine that you travel with and move around with, it's not just gonna sit on your desk, 100% I would go with the 14 inch. Now you say, well, Sarah, okay, that's cool, but uh, what about putting the M2 Max chip into the 14 inch instead of the M2 Pro? So this is why I also think the pairing with the M2 Pro is perfect, is that Max chip, it's very powerful. And it is gonna use all of those cores, the CPUs and GPUs to its fullest ability, even when you're just watching a YouTube video in Chrome. And so the battery life, which already isn't the best with the 14 inch, if you stick a Max chip in it, it's just gonna be worse. So that's like my biggest recommendation is if you want reasonable battery life, like four to five to maybe sometimes six hours of a mix of creative work and also just browsing the web, I would 100% still go with the M2 Pro because hopefully what I've shared with you already with my video editing journey, you know that it's already capable. Ports, there's not much left to say about it, but I am just thankful we got ports. I use the HDMI and the SD card slot all of the time, literally all of the time. The only thing I'll say about the SD card slot, it just kind of sucks. Sometimes it doesn't recognize SD card slots. You gotta like insert them and take them out again and just do it a few times. It's kind of slow, you know, it's not the fastest SD card reader, um, but just the convenience factor to have it when I'm traveling is just, it's, it's worth it. Something I didn't expect, I really never use MagSafe to charge. I usually always go with charging with the USB-C. Yes, Hank, you can charge via USB-C. And the more time I've spent with this, why MagSafe actually doesn't make much sense, I almost don't even want to mention it because we spent so much time lobbying Apple to add back ports. I don't, I don't want to complain about ports. But why it would actually make sense to get rid of the MagSafe and just add a fourth USB-C back like we used to have is a lot of Mac users use USB-C displays. And so usually the USB-C is used for both the display connection and power. So you can power your MacBook um, over that same connection with only one cable. That's what makes USB-C um, and, and Thunderbolt so great. But on an old MacBook, if you're using a USB-C display, well, you would still have three USB-Cs left. Now, if you did that, you'd only have two. But now also you have an HDMI port as well. So I guess you could just use that and then also plug in MagSafe um, and then you'll still have three USB-Cs open. So, you know, I'm trying not to get too nitpicky, but I just wanted, you know, to bring it up. Okay, moving on to storage. At this price point of $32.99, we have two terabytes, which I feel like is a great middle ground for video creators. However, if you have the extra budget, I would just like to make a soft suggestion suggestion to go to four terabytes. It's pretty crazy that you can have up to eight terabytes of SSD storage in these MacBooks. I would not go with eight terabytes, but I really feel like four terabytes should be like the new standard for video creators. Four laptops is just such a good peace of mind when I'm traveling or I'm not at home that I don't have to bring along a ton of external SSDs with me to actually work off of, right? I can work off of my internal SSD for video editing because that's always going to be the fastest option, always your internal SSD, eight terabytes. It's just too expensive. And the resale value for your MacBook might not uh, be as good because that's just too excessive for a lot of people. And that's also the reason why on my PC, I actually still only have a two terabyte SSD because it forces me when I'm done with the video projects, I have to force it off of my SSD and put it onto my NAS where it's safer. Okay, and the last but certainly not least, this is actually the entire reason why I kind of 
wanted to make this follow up video is the battery life. These MacBooks have become such powerhouses. They have exceeded my expectations in so many ways. So let me have this one thing that still isn't that great and could still be improved, I feel like, and that's the battery life. I get at most like four hours of battery life, which you're probably like, what? That's crazy. Cause everyone talks about MacBooks having really good battery life. But I think where people are getting confused is the MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air, MacBook Air, not Pro. Those machines have insane battery life. Like I swear y'all, they run on freaking unicorn dust or something cause they just don't stop. The standby battery is amazing and just scrolling on anything. It doesn't matter if you're using Chrome, the battery life is phenomenal. And so I think people are confusing what people are saying about that with the pros. It is not the same. It's not even on the same planet, okay? So I just don't want you to get your hopes up. Over the Intel MacBooks, oh my gosh, it's been improved like crazy. John had a completely specced out i9 MacBook Pro from like 2019. And towards the end of its life, it was barely hanging on to an hour of battery life, okay? So Apple Silicon is still leaps and bounds better. Future Sarah coming at you with some battery updates. After using the M2 Pro for a while, I finally um, did a proper battery test today. A good variety of Netflix, YouTube, YouTube, productivity, um, some apps here and there, and editing in Resolve. So I have my little notebook here. So the battery life is actually better, which is great for me to see, especially after not seeing big improvements in Resolve. So we're going from the M1 Pro on the bad side, three hours, but on the good side, around five hours of battery life to the M2 Pro, which actually got six hours and 50 minutes of battery. Granted, uh, I wasn't video editing the entire time. A little under two of those hours that were in Resolve, but I also exported a video in that time. So that's great to see uh, some power efficiency improvements. Good. My potential issues that are unique to me, where you might have these issues, is one, I use Google Chrome. I'm sorry to the people that are just like, just use Safari. My main machine is a PC. I can't do that. My entire life is in Google bookmarks, Google passwords. And so that ease of use for me in between machines, um, you know, iPhone, MacBook, PC, what have you, it's all wrapped up in Chrome. And so I just, I can't switch, okay? So that's something I have to struggle with. But if you're not wrapped up that much into the ecosystem and you can use Safari, use Safari, you're gonna get better battery life, okay? The other thing is I have some apps that are running in the background a lot. So I use the G Drive desktop app, which is always kind of syncing in the background. And so people also said that those types of apps will um, run the battery life down. So if you wanted the absolute best battery life in a MacBook Pro, well, you would stick the M2 Pro in the 16 inch MacBook Pro because hey, bigger batteries, it's a bigger chassis, win-win. But again, I love the 14 inch, so, you know, there's a, there's a few sacrifices in there, but I can't stress this enough. I cannot stress this enough, you guys. If you dabble in creative work, if you're in Resolve, Premiere, Lightroom, Photoshop, any of that stuff occasionally, but you're mainly in Chrome or Safari doing admin work, uh, taking Zoom calls, can't stress this enough, go with a MacBook Air. The MacBook Air is such an impressive machine and that battery life is so amazing. And that chip, the M2, is more than capable for everything that you're gonna do. And you're gonna be so happy that you went with the Air. You're just gonna be stoked on the size, the lightness, the performance, and most importantly, importantly, the battery life. Okay, let me know what you thought about this video. Apologies, I kind of hopped around from the M1 Pro and the M2 Pro, but as I was using this machine, I was like, oh, a lot of what I have to say has to do with my experience with this past year with the M1 Pro. Uh, most of that transfers over to this. Truly believe that the M2 Pro, the 14 inch is the best form factor, and it's also going to be more than capable for, I would say, most working creatives. Now I would say the only thing left for Max would be just like instant video export times and maybe eliminating the beach ball forever. I would love to never ever get a beach ball ever 
for the rest of my existence. My sentences are kind of struggling towards the end of this, I could tell. So let's sign off. Guys, if you like this video, smash that like button and hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. We just hit 900K subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And make sure to check out that Squarespace link down in the description below to build that creative portfolio or start that e-commerce brand that you've always wanted to start today. Squarespace.com slash Okay, stay peachy. Okay, bye.